Hi, everyone, and welcome. I'm Patricia Capella, Conference Manager with the Clarion Events Food and Beverage Group. Thank you so much for joining us today for our exciting and informative webinar that is backed by popular demand with Marriott International's Director of Global Food Safety, Doug Davis, and Menu Trinfo's founder and CEO, Betsy Craig. Together, they will be discussing Delivering Confidence, the Blueprint for Forward and Food Safety. Before they begin, I would like to share some housekeeping items to keep in mind. All audience members are in listen-only mode, which means you are muted. We will be monitoring audience engagement on the dashboard and do encourage you to participate by using the question pane. Please also find the five handouts for you to download and use on the sidebar. Doug will kick us off and speak for 15 minutes and then take 15 minutes for questions and answers, following Betsy presenting for 15 minutes and then taking additional questions for the last 15 minutes. If they do not get to all of the questions, please keep in mind that speakers will follow up personally with you after the webinar with an answer. Please note that this webinar, as well as others in our series, will also be made available on our website, foodandfebshows.com, in the coming week. Now, without further delay, let me turn the webinar over to Doug. Doug? Thank you. Thank you, Patricia, very much. It's, uh, thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure to be here today. Thank you, Betsy, and everyone on the call today. I'll get right to it with the next slide. Um, but yes, I'm with Marriott International, and we have 30 plus brands and 7,000 hotels and so forth. But we'd like to give right now a shout out to the caregivers, the heroes on the front line fighting the invisible enemy. We have a caregivers room for responders um, program, which we're giving free rooms to doctors and nurses that are uh, affiliated with different uh, organizations. Additionally, we have a caregiver rate that if you go on Bonvoy or you go on Marriott.com and put in QWO through June the 30th, you'll get a significant uh, discount on rooms, the ones that are open um, around the country. That's a picture of one of our hotels. And uh, we'd like to start out by saying that Marriott has over 10,000 hotels in our portfolio. And we have 127 restaurants that have generated over $5 million each annually. And um, we have 29 Michelin stars within our portfolio. And also we have one of the largest uh, fast casual chains in the country, Courtyard Bistro. But I'm just wondering, as every one of you on the call is, is that going to last? Is that going to stand? Are we still going to have that? Um, nobody knows the answers uh, to those questions, uh, but we certainly are trying to do the best we can to make that happen again. I would just say that uh, in some respects, we're never going back to where we were. Therefore, we need to continue to move the ball forward and to do those things that we've always dreamed about doing and um, uh, uh, doing everything we can to welcome our diners and guests back to uh, our facilities, our restaurants. Next slide. So, yeah, a lot of you on the call are, it's not your first rodeo. Um, and you've already been doing things like, uh, you know, uh, tracing and tracking and doing things like with foodborne illness outbreaks, mitigation and management and figuring out food commonality and reporting it to regulatory and doing all addressing all those trends within your restaurants in terms of food safety practices and, uh, you know, uh, encapsulating all that best practices into your training and all that. So this is no different than any of that. I, I will just say that uh, I just thought of something that happened a couple of years ago. I was giving a norovirus update to some of our very senior leaders and I was stopped midway through and I was told that my presentation was a little too graphic. So I'm wondering now if I were to give that same presentation would I hold their interest now? And I guess the answer would be unequivocally, yes, I would hold their, their, their interest. And so it's the same opportunity for everyone now to really get these things done that we've been, been thinking about and trying to do. And a lot of them are common sense. Um, and you don't need me to tell you those particular things that you're seeing and you're doing already in your restaurants and so forth. But I see, 
there's 10 things that I don't think are going to go away. And I've tried to list those here. You can read them for yourselves. But, you know, when you go into restaurants and you go into the back of the house, food preparation areas, and you see sinks that are dry and so forth, I don't think you're going to see that anymore. I think that everyone is willing and able. They understand the urgency and the compelling nature of doing the number one thing that will prevent the viral transmission, and that is washing your hands frequently or hand sanitizer. So I think you're gonna see that. And of course, social distancing is not something that I wanna say anymore. Um, I don't wanna stigmatize the word social because uh, restaurants are social places. We don't we don't want to say that. You know, you can still be social and 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 physically distance yourself. I saw a funny uh, sign where uh, a restaurant, I think it was in New Orleans, had an alligator between two people. That was a six foot alligator. So I've seen a lot of really cool things and and best practices, and I've uh, blatantly stole a lot of them. So hopefully, I can get some ideas from all of you on the on the phone today. Uh, additionally, I think you're going to see PPE as part of the uniform and specifically cloth, face coverings and so forth, and maybe logo, maybe not, depending on your tone of voice, your restaurant and your concept. But I really see that we're doing that as a company. You've, we've already seen it in Asia for years and years. Uh, I think we're going to see that as well as cleaning frequency. And I want to be careful that we're not doing these sort of theatrical optic details, but some of that is warranted. Some of that is needed, you know, some of that cleaning and, and so forth uh, in the view of the customer is really needed to really gain that confidence back. So that's, I don't see that as going away. As hand sanitizers in high traffic areas, we actually call those hand antiseptics because there's actually a term for the, there's a term for the word sanitizer. So, uh, yep. Of that and the barriers and petitions, but I would just caution everybody that if you want to change the footprint of your restaurant, it's, it needs a lot of language and discussion because, you know, uh, occupancy levels are really critical and crucial to drive top line revenue to make some money. Um, so if you're going in and you're uh, you're making these infrastructure changes, I think it needs to really be thought out in the long term that you don't spend all this money for these barriers that'll end up in a storage area in a few years. Um, but they are important and some of them will be here to stay. Um, and also contactless F and B. Everybody's already doing that, but I think there's a creative ways to expand on that. I think Betsy has a delivery piece in her in her presentations. I won't go into that. Um, I think it's important that if you're developing all these protocols and you want your restaurants to perform a certain way and you're changing the paradigms and you want behavior changes, that you need a go-to person or persons that can really be the face of your program, that can speak intelligently to customers and can uh, validate and verify what you're trying to do within your restaurant. So, um, We've implemented what we call cleanliness champion within uh, our restaurants to to be that face to drive uh, some of the training, et cetera. And then uh, what's what else do we have? Flexible leave and screen for illness symptoms. So I, just because you know the image of this person's temperature being taken, I'm not sure that's the best idea because there's a lot of uh, ancillary issues around HIPAA and collecting information and uh, privacy and unions and all that stuff. But anyway, but you can ask questions. Uh, you certainly within your right to do that. And um, you want to make sure that people feel confident that they they need they they can stay home. Uh, pay time off is obviously the best thing, but in this environment that might be, not be a, a viable option. And finally, number 10, stay in touch with local authorities. Now more than ever, with all the changing regulations, requirements, and mandates, and gosh, how do you keep up with all that? So it's important to stay in touch with your uh, regulatory folks. I put a, a link here with the CDC. Uh, there's a new guidance, uh, reopening guidelines. There's the link for that. And uh, 
it doesn't hurt to look at all this information, not only from this country, but from other countries that are already uh, weeks or perhaps uh, a, a couple of months ahead of us in this process. And we look to Asia uh, specifically for that. So next uh, slide. So here it is, these are just ideas and it could be hundreds on this slide, but you'll need to be flexible, obviously. You need to adapt to changing guest demand, staffing, business levels, and of course, supply change. And we've seen processing, processing facilities shut down because of outbreaks and so forth. But under general ops, uh, you know, reservations, and, and we're seeing in Asia that uh, you can't get into a restaurant now without a reservation. Um, and so it's, it's very important that that be uh, thought out. QR codes linked to virtual menu. And in phase three, that's when things kind of get back to normal. There's a vaccine and, you know, and so forth. Uh, herd immunity is, is evolving. We're going to still see contact items probably in, uh, remained, you know, forefront in the customer's mind in terms of cleanliness. Uh, buffets are a big thing, as you know, and then we again, we're looking to other parts of the world that are reopening and buffets are not going away. Contrary to popular belief, I don't know what's going to happen here in the US, but they're not going away in other parts of the world. Uh, I know there's some videos going around with some glow germs on somebody's hands and they show how you know, a virus particles can be spread all over the restaurant. This is nothing new. Everybody knows this happens with uh, frequently touched objects and specifically serving equipment. And Betsy, you sh I guess you know about uh, allergens uh, involved with those kind of uh, cross contact things. But uh, we already know all that. Um, but you know what I do see is there'll be there'll be barriers, there'll be sneeze guards and things, even for like uh, banquets, even for uh, non non potential hazardous foods and so forth. I think you're going to see that. And then in bars, uh, batch cocktails and things all contained are the big rage right now. Um, limited bar seating, I think, is in phase two, where you know you get a little bit higher occupancy in your restaurants. And then, but eventually need to, you'll need your beverage program to be evaluated and adjusted based on all these best practices and what you're seeing in terms of what the customer wants. Um, we know that uh, liquor laws are being relaxed and that's fantastic and, and so forth. And we're, we're bringing cocktails to rooms and, and that sort of thing already. And service and setup, uh, contactless and uh, low touch service, uh, is expected right now. But in phase two, you might want to just give them a wipe with your check or, you know, some kind of a, a tchotchke or something to go away with, maybe perhaps with your logo on it. But I think table setups, uh, when you eliminate no, uh, single use placemats, runners, and preset flatware, um, that's probably not going to go away in, in condiments and salt and pepper and that kind of thing. So that's probably. For the for the long term and i would also put one more thing in the, this slide if i had to and that's messaging extremely important mm -hmm. signage signage to customers uh about what you're doing and and to and to remain safe and uh because it's very hard uh to get folks in your restaurants to uh perhaps do the right thing so signage is extremely important in that respect. But now it's time for, you know, for operators to shine, um, to take advantage of these opportunities. It's, it's when you get into real stressful environments that the cream of the crop comes up and you, you just, you figure out very quickly who's competent and who's can, can stand the heat and that sort of thing. And they'll, they'll emerge as leaders and uh, going forward uh, after this. So, um, next slide talks about, oh, we don't talk about, these are just, uh, these are just things that we're seeing before and after and packaged, uh, food, you know, we're not really doing room service as much as it was in the past. It's all packaged and delivered to your door, Con you know, uh, you don't really see anybody and, uh, same with, same with food delivery at your house, doing the same thing. Um, 
customized all over the place. And the next slide is, uh, these are the mannequins in the, oh, uh, these are the mannequins in the Inn at Little Rock, Washington, getting very creative and uh, generating a lot of publicity for them. I think Betsy's shaking her head. She's seen this, but very, very cool. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I thought I was showing you something here, Betsy, but um, the next slide is uh, uh, something. I think this is, for, uh, I think this is Korea. I'm not sure, but you're going to see more and more of this. And of course, servers with gloves and masks are the norm for a while. Uh, next slide is, uh, uh, yeah, this is, I think, uh, on the left is Singapore and on the right, See this again, this is optics. These little cardboard things, they're not doing anything. But if it makes people feel good and it doesn't cost you anything, um, you know, why not for a while do that? Um, it's a piece of, you know, it's cardboard, it's uh, cut out. And I think that's all I have. Um, if you'd like to ask me a few questions, I, I'll stay on the line for a while, but then I have to jump off. Uh, so please fire away and thank you very much for having me. Doug, thank you very much for uh, suiting up, showing up and, and sharing your message of food safety with everybody on the call today and, and also for those that will listen after. I will remind everyone that you are most welcome to put a question in the chat. It will get fed to us if Doug has already gone. Uh, we will try to answer after the fact and we do see every question that do come to us. So. Um, the first question, Doug, is, uh, is, are you doing anything regarding filtering the air in any of your buildings, whether it's the uh, food service or the room, uh, yep. any kind of chemical or process? We're doing three things, and they're optional. One is we're upgrading our filters in the rooms. Uh, we're going to a HEPA it's called MERV 6, like MERV 13 is in hospitals. We're going to a MERV 6 because we got a bunch of cheap filters in the rooms in a restaurant. Number two, we're advocating for these freestanding uh, air filtration systems. We know that, you know, that the, the virus uh, SARS-CoV-2 is uh, most prolific in areas that are not aired out for lack of a better word, that don't have sufficient airflow. And we, we want really want to do that. And number three, we're using a technology called Restore Air that is a, uh, is a, uh, produces oxidizers in the air. Uh, we know that they're in a lot of restaurants already. They're in the cruise ships, uh, some in the White House and so forth. So we're using that, those, those three things. Awesome. Thank you for that. Um, this came in. This was uh, 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 just a basic question. Any tips off the top of your head you can think of for food safety in higher education settings? Uh, I think the same mm -hmm. things apply in higher education. I think uh, the stu You know, I don't. I don't believe this that students are less. You know, they're they're less. At, you know, want to. Uh, comply. They're less compliant. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure I agree with that because we see those spring break videos and all that stuff. I, I don't think so. I think they're going to be just as hypersensitive as, as anyone else, but uh, right. really, really don't know. We're gonna, it's going to be quite interesting. So my thought on that, just to add a moment here, is we have so many all-you-care-to-eat bars in dining facilities that's been the go-to that 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 definitely going to play a role moving forward. Although I love when you said uh, they're not going all the way away. It just might be an evolution to get back to it eventually. Um, yes. The next, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. Um, if a person is being asked to wear a mask and they come into a, one of your restaurants without one, do you have protocol for what you're supposed to do with that? Is it staff handling it, manager handling it? Are you okay in the in the context of an associate of a employee, right? Not a guest. Yes. Not not a no, customer. No, I think this is a guest, a customer. Yeah, we're not requiring guests, just uh, associates. Okay. Our our staff. 
okay. And then obviously if it is your own staff, you can handle that. But we are um, seeing that th being required in other countries, definitely, to go into a restaurant. You have to have a mask. Yeah. I don't see that here in the US. Everything. I don't see that here Not in the US ever. I don't know. We were just talking about that. I don't know. It's gonna be interesting. It would be it would be a heck of a fight. Um, okay, and then we have a dietitian in the group that asked, how can an RD role evolve in the food service industry? Do you see a space where somebody who is an RD can help add on the food safety side of the house? Um, well, that's a really tough question. I think, I know. Um, <laughs> you know, Nutrition has a heck of a lot to do with uh, immunity. I mean, I've been told a lot of your immunity is in your gut. And so everybody wants to improve their their immunity in certain ways with superfoods and whatnot. And that ties in very well with this. In terms of in terms of food safety, I don't have an answer for that. I got nothing. Okay. Sorry. I got nothing. Um, well, this one is right up, right up your alley. It says, will meetings be allowed to take place with food service in hotels? So the good question, we're going to go back uh -huh. to meetings. They're going to look different. Can we serve food in that room? So yeah, we, we're, yes. Answer is yes. So we, we were just talking about these uh, trade shows where, you know, you have booths with food and it, and and I, my answer is is to to the company is yes we got to do this and we just use the same guidelines that we're using in the restaurant, the physical distancing and so forth and so on. And, you know this thing is not food borne. You know we're talking about not using pools and and, and you know talking about ice and stuff like that. And it really is not uh, been shown to be food borne at all. And the fomite transmission yep. is plausible, but uh, I, in some respects, I think we may be overreacting about soft surfaces as well. Yeah, that's the FDA on their webinar. The very first thing uh, the head of the FDA came out and said was in no uncertain terms, this is not food porn, this is not food yep. porn. Um, okay, and let me just give you one more, because uh, I do, I respect that you have to go and totally understand um, we have quite a few questions we are not going to get to with Doug. I don't have to go until 1.30, but that'll only give you 30 minutes. Okay. Okay. That's all good. Um, your they're here for you. Anyway. Okay. So question about, do you have a good sample standard operating procedure for food service mask usage? So what, uh, yeah, what are your so personal thoughts or SOP? Okay. The usage is that um, I don't know how technical you want to get, but um, they, they need to be part of the uniform. They look need to look smart, but more importantly, they need to fit correctly. You need to know how to don them and doff them off. Uh, and we're training for that uh, and to make sure that that, that that is complied with in every respect. Uh, and also the uh, wear them one time and then launder them. So single use, single use mask, yeah. and then launder. Well, not single um, use. Any, they're they're uh, laundry. Yeah, but but use so one. Right. Yeah, use one. Use, use one. one. So, so you we'll need a couple one. of them. You'll launder. need a few of them. Yeah. 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 Launder and hot. I'm yeah. going to get into a little bit on launder on my stuff. Somebody asked about weddings. What are what are you guys looking at doing for weddings? What's the future so, of weddings look like? I just was on a call with Asia this morning, and weddings are the last thing they're coming back is what they are telling me. Uh, they haven't, they want, they want to book weddings, but it's not them. It's that the wedding party uh, doesn't want the wedding in those types of conditions, parameters. Right. You still want to be able to dance. Somebody is saying it's required to wear masks in Massachusetts, just FYI. Um, thanks for that piece of information. Um, have your employees taken issues with that? No, we talked on that. Any guidance for how much space, square feet, for employees' workspace in kitchens? Well, great question. What are we doing in kitchens? Um, so we want to say three meters uh, between people, but that's not always possible. So we're gonna we're gonna wing it and do the best we can. How does that sound? We got a general. I like guideline. that SOP. 
Okay. Yeah. And three the general meters, guideline, three, three meters. Yeah. Is that six yeah. feet? Help me. Sorry. Okay. Just three making sure. Um, and then the final, there's the one more question. They're just firing questions at you, Doug. I'm telling you. Um, okay. Is there guest capacity at your hotels or in your restaurants? So are you guys going to alter how many are allowed in based on? Yeah. So what? we have to do that based on local ordinances. Any, so we have to follow that first. And then, because we're generally relying on that first, um, but it's usually, it, like in Australia, they're not allowing more than six people to sit together, even if they're in the same family. So only parties of six. Um, so we're, 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 we haven't defined that because there's so many other guidance, guidance on that. Okay. There's other things taking precedent. Yeah. And that is my last question I had queued up for you. That's uh, well, great. That's pretty and good I'll there. Give, you did I'll nine my, in rapid succession. Yeah. I'll give my email, email if there's email any more questions. And it's global yep. food safety, all one word, at marriott.com, two R's, two T's. And uh, I'll try the best to answer your questions. Thank you. All right, Doug. Thank you for all your right, time. Have a good webinar. Take care. Stay safe, stay safe, stay well. Um, and Patricia, if we could go to next. So this is a little outside of our norm, but we absolutely wanted to grab Doug and, and get his expertise and um, be super respectful of his time. Um, and super appreciate that. There is, a, a, there's just a wealth of knowledge for someone Forgive me for a second, I'm gonna stand up. There's a wealth of knowledge that Doug brings um, that I'm always grateful that he's here because the knowledge he brings is his experience globally. Um, so let's go from looking globally uh, to bring it uh, here back to the United States and what, what are we looking at here in the US? So the first question is, Oh, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Betsy Craig, CEO and co-founder of Menu Trimpo. Uh, we do food safety, food allergies, nutrition, everything along those lines. So glad to be with you myself. Um, as we consider reopening, and is it time to reopen yet? That's the question. Well, reopening first has to be consistent with the state and local orders. In other words, just because you want to reopen obviously doesn't mean you can. Um, and there's a couple of things that came out with the CDC guidance that Doug was referring to um, that really struck me as odd, um, but once I processed them, made a lot of sense. And that's the second bullet you're seeing on your screen. And that is, are you able to protect your employees, um, especially the employees that are higher risk for serious illness? So one of the, the group of humans that we're worried about protecting have to do with age, obviously, 65 years old or older, people with chronic diseases, and the CDC has actually started calling out people with a, a body mass index of 40 or above, so obese, um, obese folks, whether that be your employees or even your customers. So when it comes to those that are compromised or vulnerable, we're looking at folks with lung, heart, kidney, liver, diseases or conditions, diabetes, asthma, asthma is very severe when it comes to this, immunosuppressed, or like I said, folks that might be obese. So have a look around who are your staff, who are your general customers, to see if those folks are the ones you're serving. If they are, it might not be time yet to open up. If yes, please continue on. And Patricia, if we could go to the next slide. So I'm going to dive into the guidance for reopening and cut it up into the different sections, just like Doug was alluding to, but maybe with a bit more detail. Um, first, we have to pay attention to transparency for when it comes to employee health. We need to make sure our employees are healthy and able to come to work and be at work and stay at work, um, especially in the restaurant business. Uh, we don't work four-hour shifts generally. Uh, we work eight hours, 10 hours, 12-hour shifts especially with scaled down workforce reporting to work. So it's important to check for fever, cough, shortness of breath, sore throat, and headache, um, especially when folks first come in. And also um, having a touchless thermometer 
in the building so that you can have someone check their temperature a couple times throughout their shift, especially if their shift is a eight hour or longer shift. Um, so these are the primary symptoms. I'm not talking about the minor, not the minor, but the lesser symptoms like loss of taste and smell. Those are things that definitely are warning signals for possibly having COVID, uh, but these are the ones that we, uh, through CDC, are encouraging uh, you to check your employees' health. Um, next, please. So I want to talk for a moment about transparency on the menu. So we have transparency for employee health. Uh, transparency is going to be the name of the game when it comes forward uh, for opening restaurants and then staying open. Uh, we do at Menu Trimpo, we do a whole lot of nutrition information for restaurants, and we are absolutely seeing restaurant menus across the country going down to much smaller menus. So menus that had 300 items are now down to 100, or menus that 100 had 100 are now down to 30, 35. Restaurant tours are making sense out of scaling down the menu so that if you are ordering any ingredient, that ingredient in the back of the house is used on three or more menu items. The idea being uh, getting the ingredients are, is going to be harder uh, when we come out the backside of this than it was before we started with COVID. And it will be more important that we can use uh, ingredient in a recipe for multiple dishes. Also, uh, family portions are going to stay big for dine out. Obviously, we're not going to be doing shareables on the table for dine in. It's going to be individual portions, um, and shareables will definitely be frowned upon inside. But we have seen a lot of restaurants do amazing things when it comes to, you know, the family size meatloaf, the family size lasagna that you take, you pick up, take home, cook off, and feed your family with. It's all becoming about comfort food. Uh, just in just in the last couple of weeks, we have had a lot of our brands that we work with on nutrition information come to us and ask us for things that have never been on their menu before, but are total comfort foods like meatloaf, like mac and cheese, like variations of mac and cheese or a mac and cheese, uh, you know, as a base with toppers of five or six different items on top. Um, and then finally, when it comes to the individual foods and the food changes we're starting to see because of COVID, one of the things we're seeing is foods that are called or considered immunosupportive foods. Uh, folks are looking to make sure their immune system stays strong and grows stronger and looking to see what foods they should or shouldn't include on their menu to support that halo of health, if you will, in the consumer's mind. It's quite interesting. I was speaking with um, somebody earlier today and the idea, if we just took sugar off, like sugar is a miracle growth for everything unhealthy, um, but it tastes so good. So it's really, really hard. We want comfort food, but we want to increase our immune system. Um, the consumer is going to ask more and more about ingredients, where it's coming from. Um, have the ingredients been certified? Can you trace it back to what farm, what farmer? Uh, we are going to get more and more curious about sourcing of our food, especially today and coming back into COVID. And it has a lot to do with the consumer's fear, the fear of what we're eating, the fear of who touched it. Um, and I'll talk about delivery and touchless delivery here in just a minute. But more and more, the transparency on the menu is absolutely here to stay, at least for the next 12 to 18 months, based on everything we're seeing at Menu Trinfo. Uh, next, please. So clean and disinfect, clean and disinfect. I have heard the terms clean and disinfect almost as much as I've heard COVID and social distancing. And I need to make sure that you understand a few things. Get it to your core, that cleaning and disinfecting are not the same step. It's actually a three-step process. The steps are clean, rinse, and sanitize. And to do that, you're going to need a cleaning agent, something to rinse that cleaning agent off, followed by a sanitizer. Clorox bleach is a great sanitizer. 
um, when we look at this, when we look at how to reopen after COVID, we need three different steps as a restaurateur. We need to know what is COVID, how to clean and sanitize our location, and how to protect from any future challenges with COVID. One of the things that's included, and I, I, I want to call your attention to the handout. So over in the go to webinar control panel that has been put here um, by these awesome folks at Clarion who are uh, hosting and honoring this webinar today, there's something called handouts. If you click the handouts, you're going to see five different optional download PDFs. One of the PDFs is the EPA's listing of what products clean and sanitize and how long sanitizer needs to stay in contact in order to get rid of the COVID. A couple of weeks ago, I was doing a webinar with some other folks on this channel, and I mentioned that it could take 10 minutes of letting the sanitizer sit in order to remove all the COVID. I had a lot of pushback after the webinar with folks saying, what's this 10 minutes? We've never heard this before. And I direct you to that downloadable 61 page EPA document where you're going to be able to look up whatever ingredients you're using and see how long it's telling you, according to the EPA, is needed to remove any traces of the virus. Um, some items, it's only two minutes. Most items are five to 10. But keep in mind, it's a three step process clean, rinse, and sanitize. Also, we have to protect people that are cleaning the restaurants. We have to keep in mind to protect the people that are taking out the trash. And then finally, I want to talk about laundry. So the virus and the particles from the virus can get into fabric. Fabric is really hard to clean. Doug and I were talking there at the end right before he bounced on masks and single-use masks or um, you know, one-time use and then launder masks. The idea is if you're using a fabric mask, the particles that can get in that fabric need to be washed in as hot as possible water and laundered properly before reused. Um, that's very, very important. And then finally, as we're looking at the slide, we show a picture of somebody cleaning off um, their iPhone or their uh, Android device. And that also goes for tablets in your restaurants um, and screens for your POS, for your servers. Having the ability to clean those screens and sanitize them keeps your staff as well as anyone that might come in contact with those screens safe. If we could go on to the next. This next slide is basically what I like to call your compliance recipe. These are the areas you want to make sure you've got nailed down before you open your door. If you've already opened your doors, today's the perfect day to make sure you've got them all addressed. Um, and if you don't have these individual areas addressed, then what can you do to address? So first, advisory councils. The folks that are out there in the media and on social media and giving conversation about what they're doing once they reopen, those are the places the consumer feels the most safe to go dine. Um, finding and sharing as much information as you can with the consumer is what's going to make you a place they turn to and trust. New additional steps. You know, never ever before in the restaurant business has the consumer been so interested, nor will they be so interested to see where your hand sinks are? Um, recently, uh, we were doing a webinar and it was mentioned, nobody wants to see a dry hand sink. We want to see a hand sink that has water in it from being used. The consumer's going to want to know you're washing your hands and nothing says that like a wet hand sink. Pre-screening, so folks are gonna to wanna to know that in your restaurant, your staff has been pre-screened to make sure they're healthy that day, the day they showed up for work. What is the level of disinfecting you're doing? What are you doing to self-monitor? They wanna make sure that folks have masks on if that's what's expected in your area. Um, I agree with Doug when he said the term social distance is really hurting us. However, distancing, is going to be more important than ever. 
I didn't get the picture up in time for today's webinar, but I saw down at the beach in Maryland, um, there's a bar that's using inner tubes to, to do six feet around. They've got people standing in the center of these inner tubes, and that's how they're able to hang out together on the bar. And then what is your policy and what are you doing for your staff if they need time off because they're ill? Um, so what's your sick time policy? Using the CDC's guidance, Doug had the link up before about the CDC document that came out. I'm going to call your attention to three more things over here in the handout. The first is Blueprint for Food Safety Updated 5620. That's the ebook that we've been selling online. That's the exact copy of the ebook. So I ask you to respect me. I'm giving it all to everybody that's on this webinar right now for free rather than charging you $29.97. I respect um, your attendance here today. And I wanted to give you my very best and my company's very best. Um, I would ask that you not give it away to 100 friends. Send them over to my website. That would be great. But I want you to have it. I want you to have all the different things that need to be disinfected. I want you to have what I believe is the number one protocol for the bathroom. Is it every hour somebody goes in and cleans off all the high touch and how you do the end of shift cleaning and there's charts in there and there's, there's a lot of tools. Um, it, is, it is the time to share tools with each other. So I wanna share that with you. Also, there's two documents in there that start with the capital letters for COVID, the OVID. One is English, one is Spanish, and those both come from the, they're the summary of best practices, and they come from the FDA. And they're, it's a, they're both great charts. You can see pieces of it right here at the bottom. The social distance is on there, but it's um, facts and ideas on how to implement some of these compliance issues once you reopen. Um, we can go into the next slide, please. So enjoy, enjoy those handouts. It's, there are interesting ways to do six feet apart. Doug talked about the alligators. In the top right, you see something that happened. I believe that was the Netherlands. They use greenhouses to separate people's space. Um, again, we're worried about particles. We're worried about um, particles coming from sneezing, touching our face, coughing going up in the air, becoming airborne, and making one another sick. The food's not making you sick, it's the particles. So this greenhouse idea is quite interesting. Um, I'm not sure you know, if it'll catch on in the US, but this is, this is one idea from across in another nation. Um, you can see if you're ready to eat, we're ready to cook. So this is off of somebody's Facebook post, distancing the table six feet apart. And are people really going to do six feet apart? They sure are if you want to go ahead and have people sitting on your tables. And then as I get ready to wind down, I've got one more slide, and then I'll take some of the questions. I'm seeing the questions pop up, so thank you for that. Um, thank you. That's scary. You knew I was going to ask for that. <laughs> Transparency and delivery. So we've heard a lot of, the last two months has been about delivery. I did a, a webinar with these guys and delivery was a big focus. And then I just did a Zoom on delivery. What do we do for delivery to make it successful? Well, first off, we continue on with delivery. Delivery is not going to go anywhere. One of the big challenges, and I've worked with a couple different brands specifically on this, how do they take their footprint and still have area to stage all their outbound food, all their delivery bound food versus how do they seat people? Because they've been using their dining rooms to stage their deliveries and to stage their carry out. So um, some of that can be worked out, absolutely. But carry out is still going to be a huge chunk of your business. There are even brands that got carry out so deeply nailed down well that they have been able to keep their sales in a very respectable level through delivery. Delivery is going to be all about continuing on prepayment, packaging, IDs, emails. I always talk about food allergies. It's so important today. It's more important today than ever before that we are able to ID and keep people safe. Um, tamper proof, you can see the sticker in the top right picture. The idea of even just a simple white sticker to close a package so that we know it's safe from your kitchen to the person's table at home. 
um, the location in the restaurant I talked about where we're going to stage that food. And then are you using third party delivery? And if you are, um, what efforts are they going to to keep the food also safe? All of those are absolutely imperative. Uh, I'm seeing more and more commercials on TV. I'm seeing more and more things on social media where people are saying, you know, our, our pizza starts in the oven. The last time we touch it is when it goes in the oven. It doesn't touch from oven to your table. Um, the consumer is going to want to know that. So um, next slide. And at that this point, Patricia, I think that I am ready if there are questions. Oh, wait, there's one other thing I have to tell you guys. This slide's great. Just leave it here. So this morning, um, there's a food safety organization in Northern Virginia that somehow is connected with our government. Now, I, I cannot remember, and I'm sorry if it's FDA-based or um, CDC-based, but it's called uh, Food Back, Fact Back. Uh, at any rate, they have decided to do a food safety day. So the food safety day is going to be June 7th of 2020, and they are asking for people to submit videos of their food safety hero and you have until the end of this week to submit a video of your food safety hero so if you have a brand or a restaurant out there and you are doing the right thing with food safety catch it on video and go ahead and submit it and i'm about to tell you the the food safety address or the url address maybe we can put it in chat for everybody it's called foodsafetyday.org foodsafetyday.org. Again, that day is going to be June 7th, and they are looking for video submissions of the food safety heroes out there. We have a lot of talk about heroes. Doug is one of my heroes. He is doing amazing things to keep people safe across this country in all different kinds of environments within Marriott Corporation. Thank you very much for putting that up. It's, I think it's going to be um, a popular thing for people to do. We need good news. I'm one of those who's, I'm a half full kind of girl and um, something like sharing about food safety heroes is absolutely a way to be half full. All right, Patricia, I'll, uh, I'll take a question or two if we have any and we can go from there. Great, thanks so much, Betsy. Um, actually, we field you the questions, but I have one in front of me to kick it off. <clears throat> okay. And we can move on from there, sorry about that. Um, it's okay. I see him. The first question, though, um, I'll ask while we're while we're getting that set, is in regards to food handlers, should they be required to complete certain training now that establishments are starting to reopen? And if so, what training? So that's a great question. Um, so most communities are not adding extra layers of mandated education but are suggesting that people get trained up, that they get as much education as they can on food handler or on allergy training or on food safety in general. So you still need to comply with your community, your county or your statewide mandate. Um, at least in the food handler world, we have a lot of brands that have been coming to us saying we just are gonna train everybody and just let people know that every single one of our staff members have been trained in food handlers. They all know how to handle food. Um, the community and the consumer is definitely looking for certificates on the wall and third party recognition uh, for that education. So the next question I'm see, please differentiate between sanitizing and disinfecting. It's very important to let people know that sanitizer is food contact surface and the EPA list is for disinfectants to abate coronavirus. Yes, and all of that information will be found on the document that I have uh, listed there uh, in the handout. Food, so sanitizing versus disinfecting are absolutely different things. Um, and you do need to use something. First off, you have to use extreme caution not to mix chemicals. So that's one area you absolutely have to use caution. And the second is make sure that anything that needs to be wiped off cannot touch food, doesn't touch food. And that has to do, the problem with giving one blanket statement is there's so many different chemicals out there, so many different compounds out there. 
So make sure people are reading the labels and using it according to label packaging. Um, just are, are partitions needed in dining room on tables? So I haven't seen any place that has mandated that, that partitions are mandatory. Partitions are the restaurant tours and the owner's way of trying to give us another barrier, another safety barrier, if you will. I haven't seen it mandated. I've been watching closely to a lot of different places. And in fact, the ebook came about with me helping the state of Colorado do their mandates for what's going to be needed. So a lot of the stuff in there is from uh, the research I did for that. And partitions are not mandated to the very best of my knowledge at this time anywhere. Michigan is also requiring masks for customers. How do we handle a customer who doesn't wear a mask? Well, that's really interesting because there's a lot of chaos going on over folks that feel that they don't have to wear a mask, but they're being mandated and somehow this became political. And I mean, for the love, you know? Um, what I can tell you is my experience has been in the food allergy world forever prior to COVID. Um, and in the food allergy world, we've had a lot of controversy over letting or not letting peanut butter enter a school and folks picketing and carrying signs, you just passion over it. Um, I think each owner, each general manager is going to need to know how they would handle it. Um, and if it is a challenge for them. I recently saw, and I want to say this morning or last night, saw a sign for a store. It was a retail store, not a restaurant, that said, we know masks are mandated. We don't want them in our store. So if you walk in with a mask, we're going to ask you to take it off or kindly go elsewhere. So it's becoming this crazy controversial issue. I just want to feed people food and keep them safe, you know? So I'm not, I don't have a straight answer for you other than to say I have compassion and empathy because it's going to be hard to figure that one out. Um, answer that, answer that. Okay, distance and seating. Is there any requirements for people being six feet apart when they are face to face? No, but you know, not that I've seen yet. First off, not that I've seen yet. Community tables are starting to go away or using a big community table, leaving the space between people. So if there's four seats or five seats on one side, they're only seating at the end. I've also seen restaurants look at not letting people do face-to-face -face or giving their customers the option to sit side by side in a bench versus across from each other um, because of eating and, you know, bodily fluids coming out of our mouths and air particles when we're eating. Um, can you comment on a time on time and temperature of heating and reheating pertaining to virus. Is there evidence if it gets killed by heat? So I haven't heard of any evidence to say viruses get killed if you cook it to 400 degrees. I haven't heard of any of that. And I would say the time and temperature for food, we need to do the best food safety protocol. Again, the virus living on food, uh, although that would be a soft, curious, I haven't heard any biology on this. So I would say I don't have a good answer for you on that, but I will find out who asked that question because I'll find out after our webinar today and be able to direct you. I actually have two sources I will direct you to um, that you might be able to find the biology answer. Again, the FDA, when they did their webinar not long ago and it's out there for public consumption, it was recorded everybody came out and said, this virus is not living in food. This virus lives from people. Um, and that's why the masks, when we're cooking on the line and touching people's food and preparing people's food, hand washing gloves, masks, you know, all those PPE for folks is more important than ever. And I think that might be it for my question, except yep. to say, um, Back to you, Patricia. Thank you for your time, folks. Please help yourselves to the tools I've provided for you. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for letting me introduce you to my buddy, Doug, and I'll pass it back to you. Thanks so much, Betsy. And, and again, thank you so much to, to Doug and also to you for giving us all of these additional tools and knowledge on, you know, moving forward safely. 
Um, I also want to remind everyone that you will receive a copy of this recording, so you can listen to this uh, webinar and refer back to it as you wish. Uh, that will be sent out in, in a day or two via email. Um, and thank you so much for being with us today. I did want to share for those who have may not have seen the press release this morning that um, Clarion Events Food and Beverage Group did announce today that our four upcoming restaurants, food service and specialty coffee events in our portfolio will be canceled due to the impact of COVID-19 that it's had in the industry, as well as the California, Florida and Illinois state government issued state of emergency orders. You know, we, we fully understand that the health, safety, and well-being of our team, our customers, partners, family, and friends is above all other priorities. So with that said, we hope you continue to join our webinars. Uh, we hope to have Betsy back again with us very soon um, as we strive to give you the education and resources to help you navigate through these challenging and difficult times. Um, you can visit the foodandbedshows.com. You'll see a list of our past and future information on webinars and keep your eyes out for an announcement soon with our summer series. So again, Betsy, thank you so much. I hope everyone has a wonderful thank and safe you. Memorial Day weekend. And until next time.